Hello and welcome. This is Ruth Hamilton and I'm back again with another video for Tonic Studios and I'm going to share with you this absolutely fabulous rather large die set and it's called Eternal Moments My Memory Book. Now as you can see it's quite huge actually. This is A4 and this is A4 and just look at the size of that. So um, lots of beautiful layering dies as I always say I love these. Um, so we've got a beautiful shape here. L I can see already that there's a lovely verso shape inside that that doesn't have outside edges so that's going to be absolutely beautiful for cutting in and making a lovely pattern. Another one here and then we've some tags, a little hole for threading thread through or whatever. Tabs to go on top of the pages for your memory book or the little um, tags that fit in. Some more here this says memories, where there's just lots and lots of different things. And these are little eyelets that would fit onto here where you would th maybe thread the books together. This is a spine die. Uh, lots of these are the ones for the pages. So they don't have edges here and you can use those to make whatever size you want. You can make the book as thick as you like it. But anyhow, I'll be showing you all of that when I come to making this up in a moment or two. But I just want to show you on these dies here, there's beautiful uh, detail around the outside. Now that's not, um, it's it won't cut it out, but it will deboss it into your paper and, or into your card. And that is a really lovely detail. And it's on the outside edges of all of those pages there. And again, we have some beautiful little hearts. I always love these. Th this one actually cuts out a tiny little heart as well. There are some shapes here uh, and more little flowers here as well. This is absolutely beautiful. Um, well, I think let's just get started. I'm going to go and look for some lovely paper that matches this and we'll get started. I have gone through these and I've decided to use this uh, size here. So it's not the largest die size that you could use to make the book. And it's not the smallest either. It's the one sort of in the centre there. Um, there's debossed detail around the outside. And it's quite a nice size and I'm just going to make a simple smallish book this way. Um, there's all sorts of ways you could make these um, using these dies here or using these ones. And for this one I've decided to use this die and make a slimline kind of book and then I'll show you the other one in a moment or two. So what I've done is I've cut a couple of pages because these are going to go on the inside and I just wanted to have a little look and uh, give myself an idea of the size. Um, I've cut the spine out already and there it is and I know that that's going to be too long for this one so I've measured this and made myself a little prototype. This is the little piece that I'm going to use on the inside or actually it's, it's uh, just my little template. So I can see already that the spine that I want for this one is going to be two centimeters and it's going to be roughly this length, which is just over 10, about 10 and a quarter centimetres, because we don't want it coming right out to the edge or poking right across there. That's 10 and a half across there. So I've taken that die. This is the one without the edge on here. And I have cut it twice. This one fits nicely um, just across an A4 piece of card. And we want sort of sturdy card, so I've used... 300 GSM bright white card and I've placed this here now they look as if they're going to be joined they're not actually because I haven't actually lined them up I just wanted to put the cutting edge out at the end there on both of them and leave myself a space in the centre and because I've worked out that I want a two centimeter um, spine I'm going to make sure that where I cut this one off is slightly longer than two centimeters on each side and the notch then is where I'm going to put a little score line. So I'll go ahead, cut these off, score down here and trim this off.
I've trimmed this little spine to just under ten and a half and then I have scored and folded it. So the in between, I hope you can see those little notches. If not, there are little notches on there and there and those are the ones that I get the mountain folds and every other uh, score line there is a valley fold. So it should look like this whenever you've finished folding it. And the ones with the marks on as well are the ones that you will glue together or put tape on. So I'll tape those together and then what I'm going to do next then is put this in here. Now I could obviously have made two of these spines, added them together, made as many as I wanted and made the book as deep as I want. For this one it's only going to have a few pages but just all you need to remember is that you can add several of these and make this larger. My next book will have more pages because I want to show uh, a couple of different ways of doing this but for now this is where we're going with it. So now with the inside together and the spine all sitting nicely I have decorated the front and the back. So what I've done is I have taken this die with the little dots and that just fits inside the one that I used for the pages. So you can see it there and this one is just fitting neatly inside that. And I used that with some golden mosaic card. It's in the background there and that's this card. And then I have used these two dies together. This is a verso die so you'll need the edge and that's a plain edge as well. And I've used that with some Sienna Treasure Speciality card. I've glued one on top of the other, nicely layered like that and it looks absolutely gorgeous whenever it's on the front of the card. I've done exactly the same on the back and then I've cut myself a little strip of the same Sienna tre uh, Treasure Speciality card and put it along the spine there. So now what I'm going to do is take the same die that I used for the front and back covers and cut off exactly where the notch is the whole way down and I'm going to do four of those, sorry another two for the inside there. That will be for here and here and that will cover up the insides of those. And then what I want to do is to make the pages for here and here. By doing exactly the same thing we'll cut off another two of these for each one. I'm going to attach by this edge onto that spine there and then cover the spine in the centre with this one and glue those two together and do exactly the same on this one. And now I have taken this die with the little dotted edge around it and I've cut out enough pages so to cover the inside of these. I've cut Champagne Harlequin and this one is the Golden Mosaic again and I'm just putting them on alternate sides. So I've got one for here and here and then here and here and I'm going to go ahead and glue those on. And then I'll come back and decorate the panels after that and we'll start making pockets and bits and pieces after that. And now I have all the little pages decorated and I'll just give you a quick run through it and show you what I've done. So I've added the the title on here, that's Friends, and I used the 
two dyes, the outer one in the creamy coloured paper, the Champagne Harlequin, and then I cut out the friend in that. It's lovely, fine script there, so it's really, really beautiful on the front. And then I have used several of the tag dies to go in here into the pockets. Now I've just cut exactly the same shape that I cut here, except I cut it this time in the Sienna Treasure card. And I took the, the point from point to point here and chopped that off with the guillotine, and that cut it exactly in half. And I was able to use the other half on the back pocket here, and so that the edge wasn't just rough and it also strengthened it a bit for putting things out and in, I put a little sliver of card down there and that just gave a lovely edging to that as well. And then dreams came true and you can add some things on to here as well. This is made with, there it is, that little die and the tag itself was made with this one. So that's that page. Then on here I have taken this die and I've just cut it out and what I've done is I've only taped it across the top and bottom and then I have put a little tag in behind there so that will fit out and in. I also cut out a piece of uh, this card with this die but I cut the centre out of it with this one and that gave me this lovely frame here which I just glued on around to give a lovely little border on that one. Um, the little heart came from this little die. Now I've used this on some other bits and pieces but the tiny little heart comes out of there and I've just added it on here and here. And then on the next page I have taken again a half of a die cut and I've used it here and here. I've trimmed it again with the contrasting colour and I've cut myself another large tag with this die and I've just again come right down this edge and chopped that off. This piece this time was cut with this die and that's a lovely big tag to put in there and you can put a photograph or whatever you need on the back there. And then in this one I thought it was a cute little pocket. I have just taken this die and I've cut that out and then I've just cut it in half and again I've just put a little trim across the top and I have embossed that forever. It's a little sentiment here. Um, it's on that sheet somewhere. There it is. Forever. And again, that embosses beautifully on um, satin effect or metallic kind of card. So that's on there. This is the die cut that I was telling you about earlier that I have taken the little heart out of here. And I have just put that over the top of this tag. There's the little heart for that one and added some Craft Perfect Satin Ribbon in the top there. And then here I've done the other half, sorry, the other half of this one, trimmed again. I've got a little tag in there. You can add whatever you like onto that tag. And then on this one I have taken the other half, the flip half of here, and put it on here. I have used the same little heart that I have elsewhere. Here it is. Um, and the eternal here and then again I have two tags and what I've done this time is I have taken this die, cut that out in white, I've added the little heart at the top and I've punched a little hole in it this time and added the ribbon through so that one goes on there and then for my next one I have taken the die with the pinhole edging, the little tag die on top that's this one, and just punched a little hole through and added some of that Craft Perfect ribbon. And I think that turned out really, really well. The colours all matching like that make it very elegant, and um, there's lots of things you could add to it. So don't forget, you can make this a lot thicker, but I think there's plenty of scope in there. Uh, I hope this is uh, fairly straightforward to follow. If not, ask me any questions you like, and... Um, I'll certainly try my best to help. So I'll be back in a moment or two with another type of album made with this as well or possibly even I, I have a blog post to do so the other album may be in it. Um, at this minute I'm not actually sure whether it's going to be an album or a card but there'll be something very nice made with the same die set. 
I'm sure you expect it by now. Every time I think I've finished, I come back with another little addition onto the card or whatever I've been making. So this uh, should be released, yes, before the, the memory book dies come out. Um, it's a little die from the next kit from Tonic um, and it's called Give It A Twirl. So what I've done is I've cut three of this shape out and I've twirled them round with my quilling tool and I've added three on there and this is the little gems from the kit as well. So it was just to add a nice little bit of decoration onto the, the cover of my memory book. So now I've decided to go ahead with another memory book and this time it's a, a smaller one. I've used the smallest set of dies in the um, book size for this time. So it's this one and I've cut this die out and from this point, from this inner edge here to where I cut off was two centimetres. So you can see there, um, I'll show you on a plain one. So you can see there from this little notch, from this little notch out to the end is two centimetres and then I have taken this die and what I've done is I've just placed, you can see there there are two, two sets of notches, I think you can see them one and two at each end and I've taken the smaller one that is in the centre here and I've pl placed notch to notch right there and gone that, put that through the die cutting machine so that has left me with this area that you can stitch the pages together with but it's also left me a little piece here and then I've scored every one of them right down from the top notch to the bottom notch and that way the pages open and close. So this is quite similar in some ways to the last one so I don't need to go through everything but I want to show you what I've done. I have done some matting and layering and this one's called Dreams Came True so there'll be lots of little photos or whatever that you have that you'll want to put in this one and I've made pockets again. These are fairly self-explanatory just with the dies there. I've, I've actually lined every page, every left hand page with um, this, this card and then I have added the other smaller layers on top and I'll have all the names of the cards down below. I love this one. This is Coffee Cream Pearlescent and it's really beautiful. That's from the Harvest Moon Trend. In fact they're all from the Harvest Moon Trend. So a little pocket then and I've trimmed the top of it. The top has been trimmed with this beautiful speciality paper here. It's called Sage Roses and I thought that went well with this and I wanted just to add a, incorporate another little bit of colour in so I've used it on a few things here. So there we are and the little tabs again. Now this one has just gone across. It's this, this little die and I have embossed it with this one. And it says live, laugh and love and I've just glued that by both sides onto the page there as you can see. And then my little tag for putting a photograph on or whatever goes down inside there. So we've got the front cover with the pocket, this one and then when we turn that over I've done another one of these half cut things so it's a full die cut slipped in half and then I put a little trim down the edge of it and the little uh, tag goes in there. The next one again is this die cut and I have glued it across the top and bottom and left the centre of it open so your tag can go in this way. And then when we flip that over we've got another one that I like I did in the bigger one there. I cut from point, point to point and that gave me two halves and I was able to use that then on another page. This is the other half of this one, half and half, and my little tag in there, and then this is the other half of this one. But I love the way all these colours go together, they look really, really beautiful. This is another little one where we just slip the tag down in the centre. And oh, there's a, it's, I don't think I've used that tag before, so I'll show you that one. That's one of the, the die, little die set of layering ones again from this beautiful big die set itself and then we've added all these little tiny ones on so another little pocket and then the back of the book so what I'm going to do now then is assemble all these and I've got them all in the order that I want them obviously you can put them in whatever order you like 
and now I have got some Craft Perfect ribbon. I'll put the name of this down below, but here it is anyhow, just to show you in the meantime. This is called Treetop Green, and it is it's the narrowest one, so it's the 3mm. And it's actually really, really good for adding, for joining these books together. Now, I've got a large, a long length of it here, and you just leave as much on it as you want, because you'll want to tie a little knot or whatever up at the top. But I've threaded it through a large darning needle. I'm going to start at the top because that's where I want the tail end of it to be so that I can join it up and tie a bow or whatever at the top of it. And we want to get all of these together so you can see through them all and start at the back and come through to the front and then don't forget to leave a longish tail on there. If necessary you can shorten that a bit but what we're going to do then is a running stitch down through and up the other side. When you get both of them up to the top there, you want to tie a couple of knots in it just to secure it and then a little bow. So I'm just going to tie a double knot now obviously at that stage then you could either leave it hanging down like that and add some beads on or you could tie a bow or whatever. I'm going to tie a bow because I like it nice and tidy. So that's the two little books. I'll come back in a little while. I'm going to do a blog post now using the same die set and I want to add a photograph of it on here as well just to show you but you will find the instructions for the next one on the blog post. So thank you very much for watching in the meantime and I'll be back soon. This is the largest book so this one is going to be on my blog and on Tonic's blog and all the instructions will be there. I don't have the instructions here because that's a separate thing but I just wanted to show you the book so you'll know where to look and I'll put the link for the blog posts uh, down below in the description of this video. But I just thought it would be nice to show you. I've, I've tried to keep the colours coordinated so that they all look nice together but I wanted to show you the three different sizes of the same type of book. So. For my large book, I have used lots of similar dies, only in the bigger size, and I've made it in much the same way as I've made it, made this one. And I just want to tell you again, just to reiterate this bit, that along this spine, where I have put the little centre piece in with the folds that I made when I cut out the spine, if you want to put two of those together, or ever as many as you like, you can create a, a deeper spine and add as many pages in as you like. But for this book, again, you can see I've just put in the amount that's there. So let's have a little look. I have created this little tag in the front here. So it's, it's just different dies uh, in the larger sizes, but it's similar to the other little books. But you can see here I've made a frame with this one. This doesn't go right in behind because I wanted to use the the paper that came out of the centre and I have die cut it here and put it on this piece as well. So we've got a tag because this is just glued at the edges and that goes down in there. And then on this one I've done a three fold page so this one folds out and then this one comes out and you can put something here, here and here and you've room for three photographs there. Now either way you can do it like this but I wanted the larger one to be on the front and this one to be on the inside. So there we are again, and then over here, I, I just love this pocket idea, and um, there's my tag for there, and you can see that, that these are much bigger, um, the tags as well, so in the smaller one, there they are, and here we are here. And then again, the half pocket, so I've cut this in half, and I've used the other half further in, and again, the tag, really gorgeous there, so much room for scope but you can actually put um, large tags and small tags. I mean there's nothing to stop you making tags this size and filling this up with all sorts of photos and memorabilia there. 
you just can't add this, the larger ones into this one but you can add plenty of different sizes into this large one and again a little strip just across with the coordinating paper and you can put as many tags and photographs as you like down and behind there and here as well so I hope you've enjoyed that certainly I had plenty of practice at making memory books over the weekend with that and um, there you are so if you've enjoyed it don't forget to uh, like the video and please do subscribe to the channel as well and you'll see plenty more um, as always I have plenty more editing at the moment and um, I'll be in touch again soon and don't forget the blog post for this one so thank you so much for looking and watching bye bye in the meantime <laughs>